I've been a Creo Parametric and Pro Engineer instructor, consultant, administrator, and end user for almost two decades now. And I've seen a lot of bad modeling in that time, but I just want to show you three bad to just totally atrocious modeling strategies I've seen in that time. First off, a poor practice is modeling the part exactly how it's going to be manufactured. So for example, if you have a machine part, you start with the billet and then you perform a lot of cuts representing face milling, profiling, pockets, drilling, etc. and so on. If you're doing a sheet metal part, it's starting off with a flat sheet, then using a cut operation to get it down to the blank and then performing bends and notches and any other different sheet metal features in order to get it to the fully formed part. And you should always consider manufacturability and how you're going to make something when you are designing, but it can limit creativity if you're only thinking in terms of, oh, first the machinist is going to do this and then that and then this and then that. You should concentrate on the form and the function of your end product and let that be your guide along with your design intent. What changes you expect the part to go through during the design and review and sustaining process. For the first example, I'm going to go to the tools tab and you have a model player command and I'm going to rewind all the way back to the beginning and let's step through here are some of the different datum features. And so we start off with our stock material, then we have a face milling operation and then we have a profile milling and you'll notice in this one that it actually includes what should be round features in the sketch of the extrude. And then we have our first pocket. There we have another pocket. And again, those two cuts were done at the same time as opposed to using maybe a mirror feature. And then we have our holes being drilled in the part. So again, just, uh, just not necessary for you to take things to that level. Again, good to consider manufacturing, but don't make the part in the way it's necessarily going to be manufactured. Here is a similar example on the sheet metal side. And so I'll go to the model player. Again, let's rewind all the way to the beginning. Let's skip through the initial datums. And we start off with our initial sheets. And then we have a bunch of laser cuts that are put in here. And then we have some rips being put in. Now we have our first bend and then another bend and some other bends in here. And so again, this is being done purely in terms of how someone would manufacture this sheet metal part. You should really be designing the fully formed part, not in the fully flat, because you can always go back to looking at the flat pattern preview. A little worse than that is treating Creo Parametric like it's a Boolean operator. In other words, rather than deleting features, you use extrudes to either fill in holes and cuts or remove bosses and protrusions from your model. And that's something called a buried feature when you have one feature that completely swallows up another feature and it's just defeating the parametric nature of Creo Parametric. If you want to get rid of a feature, just delete it. And also you should be using model check to look for buried features in your model. And model check can also have you remove those buried features right from the report. All right, using Creo Parametric as a Boolean operator. Here's what I mean by that. Oh wait, we have this hole in the model, we don't want it. Rather than selecting the hole and deleting the feature, let's create an extrude. And for the placement, sketch on this surface here. Let's use the project command to grab the two sides of the hole, hit the check mark. And for the depth of, of the feature, oops, can't get to the option that I want. Let's use two selected and I'm going to pick the bottom side of the model. 
hit the check mark, and now we have an extrude that fills in the hole. Similarly, if I wanted to get rid of this feature rather than deleting it from the model, hey, let's create another extrude and sketch on this surface here. Let's use the project command, select the edges that we want, hit the check mark, and for this feature, again, let's change the depth to two selected and select there and hit the check mark. And that way we have another extrude that removes a feature from the model. And to be clear, don't use these techniques. This is bad modeling. This is creating buried features. You should not do this. Now for the worst technique I've ever seen. And this was actually done by the worst product I'm actually associated with in my engineering career. And with this team, they absolutely refused to use the edit, edit definition, or delete commands when they were making changes to a model. Their idea was that they always wanted to be able to roll back in the model tree in order to see the previous iterations of the model. So for example, if you needed to make a change, you would use those Boolean techniques like using extrudes to fill in holes or remove protrusions or use the remove command to get rid of fillets and then put new features on top of it. And they would use annotation features in order to serve as markers in the model tree so they could see, hey, these are the different dates and who did the particular operation. And what made this even more ridiculous is that we were using windshield. They had access to all the different previous iterations of the model stored in our data management system so they could have retrieved them. And you also have compare part functions in Windchill so you can see the differences between different iterations. But no, they absolutely insisted. They wanted to be in Creo Parametric and just grab the insert here arrow and drag it up to see what the previous versions of the model looked like. All right, now for, again, the worst modeling strategy I've ever seen in Creo Parametric. So I decide that, hey, in this part, we're having a revision. We need to make this hole a little smaller, and we need to change this fillet radius. So first off, let's go to the Annotate tab and create an annotation feature. Click on the Properties tab, and I'm going to mark it with today's date so people know when I did this, and also put my name in there so people know that I'm the one who did it. And now let's go to the Model tab to make this hole smaller. Hey, let's do an extrude on this surface. And let's start off with the Project command to select these two edges here. And then let's do an offset. And I'll use the loop. And let's try value of negative 5. That's good. Hit the check mark. And I'm going to flip the direction of the feature. Let's change the depth to to selected. Select the bottom side of the part. Hit the check mark. And now I've made the hole smaller by using an extrude. And we've got to change this fillet. Let's select one of the surfaces and from the mini toolbar, I can use the remove command. It'll automatically remove the tangent references. Let me use the middle mouse button as the check mark. So now the fillet is out of the model. Let's create another fillet. Select the edge. Hit the check mark. There we go. And now if I take a look in my model tree, there we can see the features that I added and I've got the little annotation feature indicating that. Now if someone wants to go back and say, hey, what did it look like before I made my changes? Let's drag this back up over here. And I can see, oh, okay, that's what it looked like then. Hey, what did it look like before Trevor worked on it? 
drag it back over here. Again, don't do this. This is awful. This is the worst technique. This is just making a ridiculous model tree. And you can see the previous iterations of your model, either by taking a look at the previous versions that are stored locally on your disk, or by using a data management system like Windchill. Don't do this. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.